All right, welcome back, everybody. So this is the uh, RPG lesson in Hatch part two. And just to recap, I want to look at what we have so far. So this should be what everyone roughly has. We can scroll around the screen. Uh, when we're in the middle of the screen with our player, the player actually moves around. But once we get to the outer bounds of that, everything moves around with us. So I have a bunch of things that we can use to improve our game. And once we have that done, it's kind of like the engine for this, where once you have the programming done, you can kind of just add as many um, objects as you want and build out the uh, world you're living in. So right now you'll see that once I start going too far, all these obstacles on the right hand side here start getting stuck to the screen. They don't disappear. So the next thing I believe we're going to do is fix that. And we're also going to um, improve that in a couple of different ways. So I'm just going to do this. Uh, let me go ahead and make this full screen. I want to make sure that the resolution is as good as possible. There we go. And uh, hopefully this is streaming at a good level. I was just checking on my phone and it was kind of being a little buggy, but the the stream connection looks pretty good otherwise. All right. So these right here are our obstacles. And just to recap from last time, what we're doing is the obstacle is actually hidden. What we're seeing are clones of the obstacles. And what that's going to allow us to do is have one sprite for all of the obstacles. And we just create clones, set the X and Y positions of those clones, and then we render everything. So um, first things first, I'm actually going to change how we set up these X and Y positions. And um, it's just going to help us because we're going to have a couple more variables we're adding. It's going to get a little confusing if we define everything linearly. So instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate. And um, I don't know why I did it that way. Just got a new uh, one green flag clicks block. And we're going to have one column for X and one column for Y. But make sure everything is in the same order. So you can actually kind of just drag and drop blocks and just alternate. And it'll keep that order for you. And the render obstacles broadcast can kind of go wherever it needs to. It doesn't really matter. Um, we might even add a weight block just to make sure that uh, everything um, everything works properly. All right. So once again, I'm going to click the green flag, make sure everything's working properly. Everything's working as it was before. Good. So what we want to do is we want to say that if the obstacles center, if the obstacle is off screen, then we don't want to see it. So how do we know if the obstacle is off screen? So in our case, the way we're going to know that is with these variables right here, player X and player Y. And right now I'm actually going to rename those because uh, these aren't actual, actually terribly accurate names. What these really are, are our camera X and camera Y variables. So what you can do is right click on the variable player X and player Y and rename it. So player X becomes camera X and player Y becomes camera Y. All right. And once again, that was in our player uh, um, sprite. Mine's just Eric. Um, but once you have that change, you can go ahead and go back to your uh, obstacle sprite. And what we're going to work on is actually down in here when you start as a clone. So right now, you are what we're doing is we are going to the camera position plus the um, X position and uh, X position inside our list. And the Y position is going to be the camera Y value plus um, the Y position in our list. 
So we do that and we repeat going to that location in the forever loop and that's what allows us to scroll around. However, we need to change that. We just need to write a script after that shows our sprite when it is inbounds and hides our sprite when it is not inbounds. So in order to do so, we're going to need to grab two if else blocks. The first if else goes underneath the go to block in the forever loop. The second if else goes inside the if part of that block. Whoops, that should be if else. So this first one, I'm going to add a comment here. Um, is uh, this is going to handle our um, in x bounds. And the second one is going to look for if we are in the bounds of the y axis. So if we are not inbound in the x axis, you're going to want to add a hide block. So that goes inside else here. Uh, sorry, it goes inside else here. But we do need to add a second hide block, and that is if we are also not in bounds with the y coordinate. Now, if we are in bounds for both of them, we want to show them. So this is how the blocks work roughly. And uh, this was the easy part. The next part um, is kind of tricky. And it's one of those things that's just trickier to do in Hatch because um, with Hatch, all of your math is done with blocks and sometimes it can be hard to write it. So I'm just going to shrink my stage, give as much room to view as possible. And uh, we're going to go through this together. So what we first want to do is go to the operators category, grab a greater than block. And what we're going to do is we're going to say that if the X position of our object is greater than the uh, camera position minus half the width of the screen plus the width of the object or the half the width of the object. So it's a little confusing, um, but once it's in here, it's going to work. So let's go ahead and do that step by step. So the first thing we need is, um, actually it's right here, so I'm just gonna copy. Item position index of X position. So this is going to give us the X position of any given clone that we create. And that goes in the first part of the greater than block. In the second part, we are going to need a minus operator from the operators category. And we are going to need a plus operator. So the plus goes in the second part of the minus. I'm going to zoom in so you can see it a little better. And this goes inside the right hand portion of the greater than block. So what we want to put in here is camera X, whoops, camera X minus half the screen width, which is just 240, plus half the costume width. So for now, just put in 20. The costume is roughly fixed. Uh, the costume for this sprite is uh, roughly 40 pixels wide. All right, so this is one of our terms. So this handles one side of the X bounds. Now let's look for the other side. The other side of our X bound is going to use a less than block. And kind of like before, we're going to say that if the item position is less than half the, uh, the, the camera position plus half the screen width plus um, half the object width. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate from this minus sign, put it over here. And I do want this portion 
Let me drag that out. I do want camera X. I just don't need this minus sign. So I'm going to drag that out, pull in a plus sign, and now I'm going to have camera X plus half the screen width plus half the object width. And that is going to go right in here. So at this point, if you need to, you can pause and kind of copy and catch up. Once you are caught up, we are going to grab an end block, A and D. And one of these goes in one side of this. And one of these goes in the other side. And then all of this goes inside that first if statement. So next, we have the Y bounds. So what we're actually going to do is we are going to right click right on the word end and duplicate all of these blocks and put it right inside the Y positions. Now from here, we just need to edit all of these blocks so that it's regarding the Y position and not the X position. So we're going to go one by one. So first we have the dropdown, X becomes Y. Next, we have camera X. You can change this to camera Y by right clicking on it and then changing it to camera Y. Here, we don't want half the screen width. We want half the screen height, which is 180. And then this uh, sprite is roughly as wide as it is tall. So half the screen, half the object height is still around 20. Moving to the right, we do the same thing. X, posi X positions becomes Y positions, camera X, you right click on it, becomes camera Y, 240 becomes 180, and we leave 20. So let me try to center that. So once again, if you need to catch up, this is what your code should look like. I'm trying to show as much of it on the screen as I can. So you can pause and catch up. And then once you have, I'm gonna go ahead, make the stage bigger and let's test out our code. So right now, everything's on the screen. So as I move around, let's see if these disappear. And they do. If you remember before, they were getting stuck on the screen and kind of just moving along with it. And now they disappear pretty well once, we, um, go, once they go off screen and they come back once they go on screen. So in my code somewhere, I am not setting camera Y. So I'm going to fix that real quick. That might be left over from last uh, from the last lesson. So I'm just going to go to the Eric sprite and set camera Y to zero. There we go. And once again, you should have it so that all the obstacles disappear when they're out of frame. They don't get stuck on the edge and they come back when they're in frame. So that works pretty well for us. However, what if we didn't want our obstacle to just be this, um, this bush here, but we wanted it to be, um, we want it to be any number of objects. Let's say we want to add houses and, and, and trees. So what you can do is actually add those costumes and I am going to do so now. Um, let's see. I know, so, right. If you look in this YouTube video, go to the bottom that you should see a link for Sprite resources and you can download those resources into your onto your computer. They're just pictures and upload them into the obstacle Sprite. I'm gonna do that for just um, one or two. So let's see if I can pull some in here. So I have this tree that I'm gonna add. And let's see. And I'll add just this house, just to give us some examples. Now, these are pretty small images, so I'm just going to make them bigger because we don't want a house to be as small as a bush or 
I guess we wouldn't want to have a bush as large as a house. So I am going to convert each of these new sprites to vector. And then I'm just going to make them bigger and center them. It's important to center your sprite after you make it larger. So you can pause and add as many as you need and then um, continue on. I'm just gonna add these three as uh, some good examples. So right now, when we create our um, sprites, when we create our clones, rather, of our uh, objects, they are just going to be set to whichever costume they were currently on. So right now, it is this house. And if I try to move around, I am touching the house, so I can't. And it becomes a problem for me. That's not good. Also, they're not going to appear and disappear off screen too well. So we are going to want to fix that. So instead, let's go back to the optical sprite. What we want to do is we are going to create a list of um, a list that determines which costume our sprite is set to. And that is why I broke out our um, lists like I do here. It's going to be easier to look at these going from left to right as long as we kind of stay organized. So what I'm going to do is grab a when green flag clicked block, put that in here. Then I'm going to go to the variables category. So in here, I'm going to make a list and this is going to just be called costume list. And uh, I am going to make it for this sprite only. So make a list for this sprite only costume list. When you're done, click OK. And just like the others, we are going to delete all, and not one, but delete all cost of a costume list when the green flag is clicked. And then we are just going to start adding items to it. So in this case, we are just going to add numbers. That's going to be make it a little easier for us. So let's go ahead and do one, two, and just to make sure we get all of our uh, objects on here. I have three objects, three different costumes rather. I'm going to add a new clone by uh, adding one object to each of these lists. And I'm going to put this kind of more to the right, um, keep the same Y position, and I'll make this costume three. All right. So this is the code I have. Um, delete, delete all, add these different coordinates, and um, yeah, let's see what happens when I click the green flag. All right, so as I move, oh, okay, I forgot to reconnect my render block. There we go, click the green flag. And already I am uh, stuck in this house. Let me take a look here. Okay. Yeah, already I'm stuck in the house and that makes sense because we haven't actually done anything with the values in our costume list. But it's pretty easy to do so. All we need to do is that each time we start as a clone, we're just going to switch to a costume. So go to the looks block and we are going to switch costume to And then inside here, you so this is a little known secret of Hatch. You can specify the name of your costume, but you can also specify the number, like in, in terms of the order it's in. So we can go take our, um, go to variables and um, we are going to have to uh, withdraw the costume from that list. So 
when we we have to iterate through this list the same way um, we iterate through the positions. So what we're going to do is, I think this should work. We are going to grab item number of costume list, and we are just going to put our position index inside there. So every time a clone is created, this index is going to go through each of the lists and uh, give us our X, Y, and costume. And using that in the list should give us our, oh, whoops, I put this in the wrong place. This goes in the switch costume block, not in the go backward layer block. So I'm gonna click the green flag. And let's see if our costumes are correct. All right, so far so good. We have our bush, we have our tree. And lastly, we should have the house. So that's working pretty well. This is going to allow us to place objects all around our screen without having any more than just that one sprite. However, as you can see, they're not appearing and disappearing properly. The house is disappearing too early because it's assuming that it is just as wide as the bush. So there's one more list we need to create, and that is going to uh, give us our um, width and height for each of the costumes. So going back here, I'm going to pause my code, shrink the editor, And I did just want to check, uh, in the past we've been having that issue where it goes back to the AFK screen. It has not done so, so far, so that is good. Just going to make sure that I see that change in case it happens. All right, so we are going to create an additional list that is going to store the width and height of uh, each of our uh, costumes. So in order to do that, just grab another one, green flag, clicked block. We're going to put that here. And we are going to create two lists in the variable category. So each of these are for the sprite only. So check that off. And the first one is going to be costume height. Click OK. The next is going to be costume width. And once again, for the sprite only. So as always, we are going to delete all of these when the green flag is clicked. Make sure that you uh, select from the dropdown which list you are trying to control. And we are just going to have a ton of ad blocks. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in two ad blocks, make one for the height, one for the width, and I'm just going to duplicate those a few times. So as I said before, the height of the bush is, uh, the height and width of the bush are roughly the same. They're actually slightly different. So the height is about 40 pixels. The width is about 50 pixels. However, we don't know the size of our, um, of the rest of our obstacle costumes. So here's how we're going to find that. For the center, and right sprites, go ahead and hide them. And then we are going to click on the stage here and we are going to add a backdrop. And that backdrop is going to be the XY grid. So now with the XY grid selected, click on your obstacle costume. Uh, make sure you stop the code. And we are going to put the obstacle on a, at a zero comma zero, and we are going to make it show. So right now we have the bush costume, and just to show you, each of these lines is uh, roughly 20 pixels, so we have, oh, okay, when I was doing this before, I must have changed the size of my sprite, so we'll go ahead and change this. Um, you can see that the height is roughly 40 tall, uh, positive 20 down to negative 20. It's a little beyond that, so maybe more like 45. 
And then the width is... Actually, no, that's about correct. The width is about 50, and the height is about 45. So let's go ahead and change that. So the height's 45, the width is 50. All good. Now what we need to do is go to the costumes of the obstacle sprite, click on the next costume, and then go back to our full screen and take a look. So the widest part of this sprite is, um, let's see, 2040. It's about 80 pixels wide in my case. If you change it to a different size, yours might be different. So 80 pixels wide. I'm going to put that inside our next group here. And then let's see how tall it is. So 20, 40, 60. So that's right now 120. Um, 60, let's call it 140 pixels tall. Lastly, we have the house. So I'm going to go to costumes, click on the house. Let's zoom in here. And let's see how tall the house is. The house is... 20, 40, 60, 80, 100, so 200 tall. And wide it is 20, 40, 60, 80, 100, 120. So 200 tall, 240, oh, I think it was 240, 20, 40, 60, 80, 100, 120, 240 wide. So 200 tall, 240 wide. All right, let me just check on the time, make sure we're not going over. All right, so now we have our various uh, dimensions for each of our costumes specified. Let's go ahead and hide this spread again. Now, what we need to do is just alter our equation a little bit. How we're going to alter our equation is we are going to say, um, we are going to, um, re whoops, let me fix that. There we go. Let's put these comments back to the side here. All right. Um, what we're going to change about our equation is this term right here. If you recall, right here, we're adding half the screen width to half the um, object width. Well, now that our objects vary in width, we can't just use a uh, static number. We need to change that depending on what is being displayed. And this is actually going to be somewhat simple. We're just going to take an item, not from, yeah, an item from our list. So item something of our list, and we're going to switch this to our width. And um, which item do we withdraw? we are going to withdraw whatever corresponds with the index. That index is controlling, that index represents which uh, obstacle we're creating. So you can think, or which obstacle clone we're creating. So if we create 100 clones, it's going to count from 1 to 100 and set the um, positions and the widths of each of them. So right here, if you if you recall, we don't want the entire width, we want the width divided by two. So I'm gonna drag that out here just so I can get a division block from the operators category. I'm gonna put this in the first term and put two in the second. Now you will find that as you go through and complete this, um, everything's not going to be displaying to act. Everything's going to either delete off the screen a little too soon or a little too late. Um, I think there's a couple of reasons why this happens. One, we aren't measuring the exact widths of our um, costumes. We're not being super precise about it. So that's one thing. The other is that as we walk, we're not increment, we're not uh, moving in increments of like fractions of a number. We're moving in increments of like five or 10. So 
you might have 10 pixels or five pixels of play, but you'll see in a second, this is actually gonna work really well. All right, so we have this um, item position index of costume width divided by two term. Go ahead and right click right on the division block to duplicate this. And what we're going to do is we are going to place this right in that second term. And now we can do just about the same thing for the height. Right click right on the division symbol, duplicate, place it where you see the number 20, and just change that from costume width to costume height. And then you can duplicate that block by clicking on the division symbol. and move that right in there. So now with that done, let's click our green flag. Um, I'll make sure, I'll just show these two backgrounds here. But we'll click on the green flag and let's test our code. So if you, I'm gonna move up so we can see this a little bit, just change the camera position. So look at my screen, I'll go full screen here. As I move around, that house pretty much comes right onto the screen. There's like a little bit of a glitch once it gets to the edge, but then it disappears. So let's test the X. Works pretty well. And we can test the Y now. And that works pretty well too. We're not getting them collecting on the edge. All right, so we are running out of time. So this handles the obstacles. You can go ahead and add multiple obstacles. Just make sure that you uh, change, in adding them, you are changing the X and Y positions, the whichever costume you want to display, and that you are adding that costume's um, width and height uh, to that. Um, I think we have time for one more thing, and that is just adding a walk speed. I'm going to show you, I think, how to do that and then let you do that on your own. And maybe we'll pick up on it next time. But uh, the next things we have to do are that uh, we are going to do exactly with the backdrop as we are with the obstacle. Namely, right now we have like a center and a right uh, just to give us some backdrop to use as an example. But I want the background to have exactly uh, the same to, to work exactly the same as the obstacle and that's going to allow us to have one Backdrop sprite that we can then use to create clones and create an entire game map. So we're creating obstacles and a background with just two whole sprites um, So if you want you can go ahead and see if you can do that on your own a lot of the code is going to be the same You're just going to have to uh, be mindful with your variables which ones you're using and then uh, the, the last thing I'm going to show you, and you can finish doing this on your own, is um, adding a walk speed variable. So with this right, what we have is uh, we have a hard program speed of five pixels um, for every step the, the sprite takes. If you increase this number, the sprite walks faster. If you decrease it, the sprite walks slower. But if you wanted to go through and change that at any point, you're gonna have to go through and change it here, 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 and so on. So instead, what we're going to do is we are just going to go to variables, and we are going to create a variable called walk speed. So I'm gonna click make variable. Um, I am not going, I'm gonna leave it for all sprites. Um, maybe there's some kind of power up we have in the future and we'll wanna be able to control the walk speed from there. Not, I don't know. So walk speed is our variable. Click okay. Um, we're going to set walk speed to some value, be it five, like five for example. 
when the green flag is clicked. And then from here, it's very simple. Anytime you see a positive number, you just add walk speed. Anytime you see a negative number, you're going to add walk speed times negative one. Or for better formatting, negative one times walk speed. It's a little easier to read that way. So I'm just gonna get you started and then you can finish it up for next time. Um, make sure to save your work. At this point, you should have your sprite moving around. Uh, you can finish up move it, uh, changing the walk speed and you should have obstacles that appear on your screen. Um, they disappear when they move off screen and you should be able to control different costumes. In future lessons, we're going to fix that backdrop problem and that's going to allow us to start creating whole game maps. And then we can start adding some interactions, maybe between different character sprites or going in and out of buildings, going to different settings. And then once we have that going, there's anything that you want that you can uh, program into an RPG, all different sorts of quests and uh, tasks that you need to do. So that's it for part two of uh, RPG and Hatch. Stick around. We're going to be back with an iOS game in just a second.